Now I have a lot of theobromas. This is not even of the same genus as cocoon. There are quite a few things in the same genus, theobromas, which all have edible seeds. Some of them are really good. We'll see the, the theobroma bicolor, which has really good edible nuts that we eat. None of them would you mistake for chocolate, but they're good. Actually, usually these are not very productive. This is really unusual. This is the, uh, <coughs> the same thing here, Anya. Hmm. Theobroma bicolor can be used for chocolate. They do that in Guatemala. They uh -huh. make, but they mix it with co regular cacao, uh -huh. I think. Yeah, that's another Anya. Oh, is that pretty? Yeah. Actually, there's one of them. There's one species. All of them have these really pretty pink red flowers. One of them, which are sweet smelling. And one of them have dark red flowers, burgundy flowers, they're darker than that even. And they smell bad, and they're fly pollinated. They look like that to attract flies. Another one. Sap was coming from this tree and attracted a lot of wildlife. Really beautiful uh, beetles. Those are big beetles, huh? This big. That's the Ispingo. This is the Ecuadorian cinnamon that's going around, I hope. And what's going around is the bark. Just like regular cinnamon, you can use the bark. Strip the bark and grind it up and it makes really good cinnamon. But you can also use the calyx, the part that's surrounding the seed. If it's dry, it looks like a little hat. And that's what's usually commercial in, in Ecuador. Just the hat. They don't really make the bark that. And the hat has a really strong flavor, like between cinnamon and clove. Really, really nice. How productive is a tree? I'm sorry, what? How productive would a Not tree so be productive. And even less productive are those calyxes, of course. You now you can get a lot of bark, but it's hard to get very much of this. And even the leaves, like most of the spices of leaves, you can make tea out of the leaves, too. But tea out of the bark is better. Tea out of the calyx is the best. So when the Spanish came down, you know, for many years they, they thought they were still in India. So they were looking for cinnamon. And they found this, but it didn't work out. It was in the middle of the Amazon. There weren't very many trees. It made them happy for a little while, though. That's an ornamental, a brownia, which you see here in Hawaii. This is a local native. This is a browniopsis. Another legume, those are the new leaves. The whole tree can, can look like that, it's really showy. That's chicle. Chicle, like chiclets, chewing gum. Because you can make chewing gum out of the sap. There's a tree from Central America that's like the original source of chewing gum. You can make chewing gum out of the sap. Called sapodilla, or it has other common names. This isn't it. Not even in the same family. But it also, just like the other one, has good edible fruits. And you can make uh, out of, you can make chewing gum out of the sand. This is Litsius, an Asian fruit, a relative of avocado. Kind of tastes like sweet avocados, slightly sweet avocados. The, the pink ones are ripe. And that's a Kong ant, those, that inch and a half long ant, are pretty common there. Did you say it's a relative of avocado or just... It's in the same family as avocado, yeah. And what they say is you can graft avocado onto it. Huh. And it doesn't get the phytophthora root rot that, uh, that avocados sometimes get here. I don't think that's been done a lot, but, but it's been tried for sure. They found that it's not compatible oh, yeah? after a while. Okay. Yeah, that does happen sometimes. Though. Stuff seems to be compatible, the graft takes, but then after a while it's yeah. good. Those are the, you may have heard of them called bullet ants. They sting very hard. And they're an occupational hazard of climbing up fruit trees, because they're often... That's 
That's the Litsia again. <coughs> this is a meringue. Pretty picture of a meringue. Meringue is a breadfruit and jackfruit relative. Really a good fruit. Common throughout Southeast Asia, really. Philippines and, and Borneo, too. How do you eat the fruit? You open it up, which is easy to open up, and then the, the, the pieces of fruit with the seed inside kind of just stick up and you, you take it and eat it. It's easier to eat, easier to eat than a jackfruit for sure. And the seeds are edible too, although they're so small and they have a little shell on them, so they're not so interesting to eat. And you said it's related to jackfruit? Yep, same genus, Artocarpus. This is an ornamental legume from the Amazon. It's really showy flowers. Marmaro's Island. This is a sapote. What they call sapote in Ecuador and Colombia is what here they call chupa chupa or South American sapote. It's not the Central American fruit that's often called sapote there. Actually, sapote is a Maya or Aztec word that means fruit. There's a lot of sapote, and they're mostly totally unrelated. There's white sapote, black sapote, yellow sapote, green sapote, sapote, mame sapote. This is sapote in Ecuador and uh, in Colombia. This isn't the common commercial one. This is not the chupa chupa. This is a local one. And it's very good. And very pretty, too. It's uh, called Maticia alata because it's got winged... Uh, Wing flowers and the calyx is wings. Those are the, the flowers of that. Matisse, I love <laughs> Another Matisse, this one's native on our farm. White pulp, about this big, white pulp inside. Very good. There's lots of Matisse, Matisse and Puerarideas. <coughs> And there's another one, mm. Maticia de San Lorenzo, Soy Gengi. And that's a leaf, big leaves, like the, like the chupa chupa has too, has big leaves. <coughs> and this produces on the trunk, which is really showy. And the fruits are smaller than chupa chupa and a bit fibrous, but really yummy, sweet and good. That's a weevil. A little hard to see what you're looking at. You're looking up into this tree. It's a moriri. Those are flower buds you're seeing on the trunk. So it's going to produce really a lot. And that's what uh, that's the flower and that's the fruit. Oh, they're pretty. Yeah, they're only about this big. Super sweet, but not much to eat really. It's uh, a melastomatase, and people know about melastomatases a little bit because they tend to be very weedy. Myconia. That's yeah, what we got here. Myconia, yeah. But this is very untypical. You look at it, it doesn't have the same type of leaf, which is so characteristic of Melosomatasia. And uh, it wouldn't be invasive, I don't think. It just has one big seed. <coughs> this is mulchi. Commercial crop in the Ecuadorian Amazon, in a little corner of the Ecuadorian Amazon. It's a plenia, the same genus as Jabochicaba, and produces on the trunk, just like Jabochicaba. Good size, juicy, lots to eat, sweet, really a nice fruit. Be really hard to transport, soft. And there they are growing on the trunk. Thanks. <clears throat> Jim, uh, about how large do those need to get to stock bearing? Um, maybe 15 feet. They're slow growing, huh? They take a long time to get to 15 feet. Yeah, yeah, that's what the tree looks like. And it gets, I don't know how well you can see it, but different parts of the tree have different, there's brand new leaves that is bright silver. Really pretty, you have like three different colors there. And the bush, it just comes down to the ground and then inside they're all, all the beautiful fruits. And this is a giant mulch. You know, I, for, for a long time, I didn't have any mulchy trees producing. 
and I regularly went to the Amazon to where my friends live and I got mulches in the market. And so for I saw many mulches over many years. And they're always about this big. But then my tree, one of my trees started producing and it produces fruits that are twice as big. This big. Just a, just a random seedling, huh? Which is a good reason to plant seedlings, huh? You know, you think of uh, you know people that are experimenting with uh, with uh, breeding new varieties of fruits. You know, you hear about people planting thousands and thousands of trees to be able to select one that's good. Well, I didn't have so many of these, and the same thing kind of happened with rambutan too. I brought in rambutans, just seeds, because I couldn't bring in anything else. Seeds from good rambutan producing areas, Puerto Rico and Australia. And I planted seedlings. And I got maybe 20 seedlings, and half of them were male, and most of the female ones were not very good, but a couple of them were really good. Just as good as the commercial crops in Australia, it seems to me. It's nice to plant seedlings. You, know, you get a lot more, you're, if you're planting grafts, then you're not, uh, you're not contributing to the genetic diversity. I suppose. <laughs> This is called dwarf mulch. It has kind of the same name because it's say, from the same little corner of the Amazon. Looks kind of similar. You can see what the fruits look like. Sort of ridged fruits a little bit. But other than that, not so related. It's a mutasi. It's the same family, but I don't think the same genus. Not don't even know what genus it is. Very nice, spicy, tasty fruit, but not much there. It's just one big seed inside. But they do produce very quickly in, in small, unlike the regular mulch. What type of mulch is it? It's called dwarf mulch. This is an Amazonian fruit. It's a mordasia, a breadfruit, jackfruit relative. I've never eaten one. Those are immature, but supposedly edible, like a, a jackfruit or something. Somebody in Ecuador made this, and you're not going to be able to see it very well, but it's really interesting. The centers of origin of important plants and animals, too. Domestic animals and domestic plants. Is that available online? Um, I don't think so, but, but I could send you a copy. I'd be happy to send anybody a copy. It's in Spanish. You know, each of these has... Uh, Make that one of your handouts and put it on our website. Uh huh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, I'm not even focused enough to read. <coughs> I think they have the Spanish common name, which is sometimes the same, and the botanical name, or the scientific name of the animal. And you can see that the guy might have been a little prejudiced if you compare how many there are in, <laughs> in South America <laughs> how many in Southeast Asia. Durian is not there in Southeast Asia, although, for the most part, it's very good, really. Just missed a few things outside the European. I'm wondering uh, how are we doing for time? Well, I, mean, I was I pretty much going to wait until my computer died to take a break. I didn't see what time. Yeah, I made a beep a little while ago. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. It's, it's still up half, so. Okay. okay. Um, it might last through the whole thing, so we could take a break. Yeah. Like a half hour. It's 10.30. Okay. Okay, we can do it a little more. No, I might get to the end by the time we get to the break. Well, okay. Yeah, what I figured is if we get to the end, you know, after the break, we'll maybe go through them again really quickly and people can ask questions and maybe I'll think of some new things too. Anybody who wants to stay. Yes, we did. Oh. Yeah, we already know. And what is, uh, what is your website? Guaycuyaco. Guaycuyaco is a Quechua word, Quechua word. It means uh, water in a canyon like. Uh oh. G U, and we're the only one, you'd think there'd be plenty of waters and canyons in 
in Quechua areas in South America, we're the only ones in the world, apparently. So if you look for Guaycuyaco online, it's all us. There's a, the seed sales is there. G U A Y Y C U Y A C U. Now our email is guaycuyaco at gmail. You had a card with the, um, the cinnamon bike, and I wrote the red set down, but you have one of those cards. Yeah, yeah that's it's guaycuyaco through the website. I already went there. It's a good website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you Google Guaycuyaco, you'll get it. You just Google your name and Guaycuyaco when it comes up. It's the first one. It's very easy to find. You're famous. <laughs> I came on a flight to Hawaii years ago, and I was sitting in my seat in the plane, and this guy comes up and he had the same seat as me. And it was James West. Wow. Oh, that's he was like coming to Hawaii. Wow. I never found out later who he was or anything. Last week, oh, last week it was this connector here. I <laughs> unplugged it. Okay. Okay. I don't think he does either. But I was <laughs> sure through a, through a seed thing, I'm sure. Somehow through seeds and plants. How did met. you meet? I, th you? I think at some kind of fruit meeting because Jim is often invited as speaker, but I can't remember where it was. But. I don't think so. I've only been invited as a speaker in recent uh, years. And we've been well, you've, you've, you've been a keynote speaker here at, in Hawaii. But I'm guessing that's where it was. I don't really remember. See a relative of Lukuma, you know. Yeah. Lukuma in, in Ecuador, it's a highlands crop. Eight thousand feet typically you see with Lukuma. Lukuma. Mm -hmm. Got to try it. I went to California last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it grows in California, it probably doesn't grow in the yeah. lowlands crop. It wasn't from California. Ah, okay. For some reason. Okay, but they can grow it in Southern California. Mm -hmm. They grow it in Florida. What was the fruit? 